Brave Maker Show is hosted by Tony Gaffestone and Christina Jackson. Thanks for tuning in. It's showtime. Hey, hey, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Tony Gaffestone here. My pronouns are he, him, his. I'm a filmmaker, a writer, director, actor, living it up in Redwood City, California. That's the San Francisco Bay Area, which is, as we say, hella hot right now. And I am a Caucasian guy with some glasses and brown hair and some beard in a studio that says Brave Maker with a yellow striped chair. And I love getting to do the show. You can find me, TonyGaff.com, or on the show, socials at Tony Gaffeson. I'm always with my friend, my collaborator, and my the producer of my next feature film, Christina Ray Jackson. Welcome, Christina. Love it. Thank you, Tony. That never gets old. Producer. <laughs> Go, Veronica, go. How exciting. I am Christina Jackson, and it is hella hot out here in Dublin, California, in my studio. And I am an African-American woman, and I'm a comic book writer, and I love the cosplay. And today, Tony called it out as soon as I turned on the camera. I'm rocking a Poison Ivy meets Supergirl cosplay mashup today. I've got the red flowing Poison Ivy hair and a red glitter lip with the patriotic superman shirt and uh it's awesome to be here i'm in my favorite power chair also by the way and it's by will will model c and i am queer and my pronouns are he she and i'll throw it back to you tony never disappointing with this uh cosplay this k-ray cosplay please Thank go follow you. christina follow this journey she's popping it out every week we're on the show and it's super cool and i told her i'm going to contribute to this because i have some of my own little cosplay that's stuff. right <laughs> so just wait just wait i'll take some credit yes, for the, it's the next awesome. uh, mashup all right well before we bring our special guest this these next three weeks by the way are going to be slamming because yeah. we have film festival filmmakers our film festival is just two and a half weeks away july 7th is the opening night and we are going to be featuring the selected filmmakers over the course of the next three wednesdays mm -hmm. so you don't want to miss that we have two of them today before they come on we always like to ask the question of each other how are you braving your way toward your creative goals as a way to inspire our listeners and followers to go after their their dreams one step at a time one little baby step what are you doing what you do this week a couple little baby steps one approve some more color pages for my comic book uh to be announced on that release date and i <laughs> launched the black joy tv i i started a new uh, project uh, i dropped uh, the link it's on my instagram and tiktok i'm just capturing little moments of black joy and tony you're definitely going to make an appearance and it's black ooh, with a Q. Ooh. It's very queer centered, black centered. And yeah, it's so cool. I just do the first one of uh, capturing a musical, my first musical that I just did. That's how I'm braving my way. What about you, Tony? How are you braving your way this week? I made a connection with a manager in LA. And so I braved my way. It took almost two and a half months to nail down this freaking phone call, which was a zoom mm -hmm. at first, then became a phone call. And uh, it went good. Uh, it wasn't like I signed yeah. with him, but it felt like, okay, one little baby step. He said, Hey, you know, send me more mm -hmm. of your scripts. I want to read some more. If you need any more advice, or he said he'd even come on the show. I was like, I'm not going to bring you on the show, wow. bro, until you represent me. <laughs> but uh so yeah that, that felt good it, 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 there's just so many things i'll be in pasadena on saturday to screen my film last chance charlene so any people in la want to come out let me know we're doing a little pre-party soiree soiree and then we'll be in chicago mm -hmm. christina might be with me we're screening That's right. the, feature, the feature at the blue whiskey film festival and the filmmakers chicago filmmakers theater which is really cool in july so cool so that's how i'm braving my way keep going after it y'all keep yeah doing it it's super hard i vented to christina last night we have to make a whole new dcp digital cinema package which is not cheap and mm -hmm. uh it's just there's so many things that would discourage a filmmaker from moving forward but we're gonna keep going one little thing at a time that's all yeah. you gotta do one little that's thing that's all you gotta time. do just keep moving forward that's right and we got tears. two people two people try those tears <laughs> two people who probably shed a lot of tears making their films as yeah. they are going to be Featured this July 7th through the 10th at the fourth annual Brave Maker Film Festival. Let's welcome right. Eli Vasquez and Spencer Wilkinson. Welcome, guys. Welcome, filmmakers. 
Hello, hello. What's up, everybody? Thanks for having me. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Hey, everybody. Thanks for having us. Uh, I definitely can relate to the shedding tears and production on a film. So <laughs> I heard that piece. Pre yeah, pre production, like production, post production, <laughs> all of it, yeah, all that, exactly. all of the above. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's have Spencer. We'll start with you. You are opening night out in the Redwood City Square. Alice Street is your feature length documentary about artists in Oakland. Let's uh, have you do your introduction. Just tell us a little bit about yourself. Give us your, your pronouns, where you're, you're videoing in from, and anything you want to share about yourself. And then we'll go to Eli. Okay, great. Yeah, my name is Spencer Wilkinson. I'm the founder of Endangered Ideas Productions. I'm based here in Oakland. Uh, he, him are my pronouns. I'm a Caucasian male. Uh, right now I'm sitting in front of my virtual studio uh, background, which is one of the walls of a giant mural that was painted in downtown Oakland. And that's kind of the featured location where Alice Street takes place. It's actually on Alice Street. So. And you're seeing some imagery uh, from the film. There's the mural. There's one of the muralists. And, That's so uh, cool. And honored to be on the show with you guys. I'm part of the festival. Right on. Thanks. Eli, yeah, give us awesome. your intros. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, everyone, for having me. Uh, Eli Vasquez, uh, proud Mexican, Afro Latino, wow. uh, originally from Chicago. Uh, now Ooh. living that, wow. yeah. living <laughs> that uh, digital nomad life now. So I'm uh, LA, Mexico City, enjoying those two cities right now. Uh, going back and forth between there. I uh, pronoun he, him. And uh, my background is not as glamorous. I'm visiting the family right now with uh, I'm the oldest of 10 siblings. This is one of my little sister's rooms. So, uh, but they're very much inspiration of my short film, uh, Bodies Will Tumble and Roll, which is a, a comedy thriller uh, put, to, put together. Um, yeah, and it's super dope, uh, black and brown uh, inner city cheerleaders that go to a cabin in the woods that uh, need to come together and become a team to save their coach uh, from serial mm -hmm. So fun. <laughs> We're going to hear more about that, but let's first turn it over to Christina, who likes to start with a very specific question. <laughs> That's right. So we love storytelling, and one of my favorite stories are origin stories. So let's jump in with Spencer. We would love to know where were you born and raised, and how has your journey uniquely prepared you for the work you're doing today? Okay, yeah, awesome. Well, uh, yeah, let's see. The journey began in Denver, Colorado, where I was born. Uh, my folks are both from the Bay Area, so they're from, uh, went bed at San Jose State, uh, but ended up relocating uh, up to the Midwest, or I guess Northwest, Colorado, and then Montana, where I spent my first kind of 14 years. Uh, then I moved to Los Angeles. I went to high school in LA, um, moved up to um, the Bay Area after that, uh, college in Santa Cruz. And I think that you're asking kind of like how the origin story relates to what the work I'm doing now. Yeah, how, how did you end up making Alice Street? How did that project come to you, mm -hmm. you know, just from your journey? Yeah, so I started off really getting more into nonprofit work. Um, mm -hmm. I uh, was uh, doing kind of community organizing, working with young people in Oakland, San Francisco, um, all kind of up and down the Bay Area and had the interest in video on the side. So I think Alice Street kind of shows that combination of my work with nonprofits and the connection with uh, the art of filmmaking. Um, and I was living on Alice Street uh, when I heard about this big mural that was going up right down the street. So I was very much kind of in the local community wanting to get to know more about um, my neighborhood and documenting the process of this mural really kind of uh, opened up the world of of the diversity that all is located in this downtown intersection at Alice Street and 14. That was kind of the gateway into the story. That's beautiful. That's like one of those projects, perfect projects that kind of fall right into your lap if you're living on Alice Street. That's very cool. All right, we're going to throw it over to Eli. Uh, let's hear your origin story. We heard a little bit. Where were you born and raised? How has your journey uniquely prepared you for the work you're doing today? 
Yeah, yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, I'm from, again, Northwest Indiana originally. And I have to explain, Northwest Indiana, everyone thinks it's all white people in cornfields. This Northwest <laughs> Indiana is diverse as hell. We're like in the Chicago oh, area. Wow. So blacks, Puerto Ricans, Mexicans, all that. So <laughs> we're, we're all uh, part of that. Uh, so, yeah, I grew up there, uh, oldest of 10 siblings again, six little sisters, crazy chaos, Latino family. Um, and I, I, the number one thing I want to do is get out of that. And then later of going to film school and become a filmmaker, you realize, wow, this is like some of the best material and inspiration I'm ever going to get uh, yeah. growing up with that chaos. So, um, yeah, so I, I uh, fell in love with genre stories. I fell in love with ensemble pieces, comedy. <laughs> Uh, but I love the horror genre as well, because if you're mm -hmm. Latino from the community, you grow up with everything, being scared of everything, uh, or there's <laughs> ghosts or something in, in your life. But yeah, I, I um, that's really where I, I, kind of the origin story came from. I always, I always was creative, always loved the arts, and um, I lived the Fresh Prince life because I got in one little fight which I got punched in the face <laughs> with an iPod in the hood. And my mom got scared, so we moved to the nice part of Indiana. And then they had a TV class there, and the rest was history. And I've just oh. been making indies and projects and things like that. So so uh, this film is really like an inspiration of the Latino community and the things we go through through these girls and very uh -huh. much inspired by the chaos of the family and upbringing that I came from. Uh, and yeah, I just like to tell these stories that are going to make people escape and laugh and, and see that diversity in a fun, filled, packaged way. So. Yes, we got to do all that last night as we rewatched uh, your film with some of the crew helping to organize <laughs> a film festival. It's great. It's great. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, I really appreciate it. We were doing our R&D our, our to prep for today. And let's show we have yeah. a 15 second trailer. Uh, if you're watching either live or on the replay, I think there's a, a, a adult word that might come out of here. So run the children, the young ones yeah. out. And uh, we'll be right back after these uh, short messages here. Let's get this party busting, y'all. We're taking those motherfuckers out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> short and sweet, baby. Taking those mother effers out. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Yeah, sorry, kids. Uh, a lot of awkward conversation <laughs> with the parents and kids on that one. But yeah, uh, that was so yeah. Fun. <laughs> well, let's let's talk a little bit about the making of this film. It's a 15 minute yeah. short. It will be playing on Friday night, July 8th. We'll make sure to put the link in the the chat here. Uh, it is going to be playing before a feature documentary by Damian Smith that is about. Uh, toxic chemicals being experimented on people in St. Louis. So uh, you, there's a, it's a cool little vibe that these short, this your short and the feature will mm -hmm. partner together. And we're gonna have a good discussion afterward about why these stories are being told. So say a little bit more about the story. You know, it's all women basically. And then three white men who are named white men, one white man, two white men, three, which I loved it. <laughs> I took no offense. It was great. I loved it. Uh, but talk about where the story came from as a um, as a guy. Uh, do you have a cheerleading background? What the, it was all about teamwork. Talk about how the story came to you. Anything you can share about the development of it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, a fun fact, too. Uh, so the opportunity came about because uh, uh, La Leaf, the Los Angeles uh, Latino Independent Film Festival, uh, uh, brought on 10 uh, filmmakers, five Afro-Latino, five indigenous, and they partnered with Netflix to get our projects funded. And that was a great opportunity. And I actually pitched an idea the year before about toxins going into uh, a community of color and then a zombie outbreak happens. Which they, they, they love the commercial idea, but they needed more identity. So I was like, okay, I love to tell these stories. So I was like, I was writing a feature for that for Bodies of Tumble and Roll. The, the pro and so we created it as a short. We put a lot more heart and identity in it. And really, uh, it, it, I wanted to sh change the way we viewed the typical American classic horror story, where first off, the POCs usually die first. And two, cheerleaders are dainty, you know, mm -hmm. usually the ones that are just helpless. So it's like I wanted to have melon and curls popping. But I wanted them to be powerful as well and and uh, be the ones that are terrorizing. So um, 
so yeah, it's very much inspired by my sisters. I have two aunts that are cheerleaders, very close to my age. So they made me uh, go to all the fu the fundraisers and and cheer meets, and I had to practice with them. So I understood it as well. I understood the cheerleading world as well. So I was able to bring authenticity to it, and they got to look at the script mm -hmm. as well. But I really like to tell stories that. Um, you know, have a message behind it, but has plot and ideas to bring in the masses. So we talk about colorism in the story. We talk about mm -hmm. uh, insecurity of our identity. We talk about not feeling enough in, in just being a Latin, Latina, or not feeling enough in general. So it has all these elements of heart and community. And those are all my thirst picks on my uh, Instagram. But, uh, but yeah, <laughs> but... But it's all about why we need to come together as a Latino community. Because as being Afro-Latino, yeah. I felt like I wasn't enough for years because I didn't look that Eurocentric beauty standard. So um, it's that's really what the message is. And it's like, if we could come together, we could really get things done in the world. And in this particular story, beat the hell out of these killers in the woods. <laughs> so uh, that's really where the heart comes from. I'm very much inspired by my Afro-Latino mm -hmm. little sisters, my Mexican little sisters, my Puerto Rican little sisters. So, um, but yeah, that's, that's uh, came from a real honest, beautiful place and in this beautiful, crazy, insane world. So we're really happy to, to have it made. Our lead programmer, uh, Robertino, is in the chat and he says, great, share your projects with the uh, great share your project with the Braidmaker community and with the world. You guys rock much success. Yes. Thank you, Robertino, oh, for nice. being on the, the chat today. Um, so again, Friday night, July 8th, come see Eli. Eli will be in person at the film festival, at the so Brave Maker Film Festival. Y'all, if you're watching this uh, either live or on the replay, don't sleep on this. People love to mm -hmm. wait last minute. We haven't been in person in a while, but we only have 200 seats in this theater, 208 seats to be exact. Mm -hmm. So get your tickets now. There are programs, yes. panel discussions, workshops, actor and writer meetups. You can get some coffee. Buy Eli a coffee and talk to him about yeah. his next project and what he's doing. I'll buy you a coffee. You know, come on down uh, and watch the movie, we'll, everybody. You know, well, not everybody, not all 208. The first person to say hi, you got a coffee on me. How about that? You know, that's that's the way we got it going with that. I just realized that's 208 coffees I would have. To <laughs> that's a lot of coffee. But, uh, I was like, wait, no, the first one, the first one. Yeah, then we can all chat. Just the but, yeah. first one. Come on down, everybody. Come say hi. Check out some dope movies. Uh, it's going to be fun. So because we have a lot of filmmakers that are listening to the podcast, you know, after the fact, with the audio version, or we'll watch this on our YouTube channel, uh, talk about your your process of right now you're still raising money. You talked of before we went live that you have, I think you have a crowdfunding campaign going on right now. So you're trying to raise costs to cover things you've already spent, but you're coming up to Redwood City. You're, you're traveling to other film festivals. These are things that filmmakers need to get covered. Talk a little bit about what the post- process and film festival circuit looks like right now for you yes 100 percent. i think this is the thing is a lot of people when they and i'm sure the filmmakers listening in it's like everyone's budget usually just goes to production and then post-production happens like oh crap but or the funds that you do have with post-production <laughs> then that gets spent and then it's like wait we have to actually have to show this thing you know and like what's the point of making a movie if you can't show it so we actually hit our goal today of 20k oh, so very God. big news very big news with two days and 20 hours to spare so we're gonna add extra funds to cover the cost uh operational costs on the sites and all that but um but yeah so um this is all about yeah recouping post-production post costs but the big thing is we are going hard in the paint with festivals you know mm -hmm. you have to make that investment because you want to be there you want to be at the festival you want to shake yeah. hands Brave Maker is an awesome opportunity for me to connect with other filmmakers, connect with industry people, learn things so I yeah. could take my career to the next level, that we could take this project to the next level. So mm -hmm. we want to be in Miami. We want to be in Texas. We want to be in New York. We want to be in Chicago, where I'm from. And we and the message is, like, I inspired my little sisters. We did a family premiere, and they were all laughing their asses off. I want to do that around the country and normalize black and brown excellence. That's my mission. Yes. And how can we do that if it can't get seen? So... With these funds, we are now able to do that, make that a reality, and I'm going to be around the country inspiring people, getting people hyped, and making this into a feature, because that's what it always was meant to be. So that these funds let that happen, be able to bring this around the country and meet the people we need to meet in order to make that a reality. So I love it. Normalize brown and black excellence. And come on, you guys, right. we want to see this zombie movie, right? We want to see yeah. Eli zombie <laughs> movie. That sounds wild. Yeah. Yeah, it should be dope. 
Bring it. We're 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 here for you, man. If we can help with the the, the process, and I hope these four days you spend with us in July, I hope they make some cool connections and 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 future collaborators. Christina and I, um, our our backstory is we met in 2019. In January of 2019, she was a participant, an audience member. She was the reigning Miss California wheelchair at the time. We kind of hit off a little cool friendship. Then she came to volunteer at the 2019 film festival, selling I our did. merch. And then boom, a year later, pandemic, we started the show and we did a bunch of films together. She was in my first feature. We're working on the second feature. So you just never know how these little things never happen. Know. It's so, so cool. So we're rooting for you, Eli. It's good I love that. Thank you all so much. I appreciate that. It's weird just seeing my face in another screen. <laughs> also, another lesson, to, another just tidbit to any filmmakers listening in. I was literally just in a in a hostel room, and I had no production or lights to do my video for my crowdfunding. I literally was just me in my room with my webcam that you're seeing right now, and that was it. And that's all I had. And you're and so, and I was able to raise twenty k. So. Overall, don't feel like you need all the bells and whistles. Any filmmakers that are trying to raise money, all you need is your message, creativity, mission, and Ooh, all love that. It. So, uh, That's just all little, you need. Just a little that right with that. Yeah. <laughs> That's all you need. Eli. You are enough. I keep hearing you say that, Eli. What a beautiful oh, message. Yeah. Exactly. You could be teaching some stuff with us. Let's get, get hey, are you listening out there, yeah. filmmakers? Meet Eli, hang out. Don't use the word pick your brain. I hate that, but get to know him. Find a way to provide value. And again, buy him coffee. Okay, cool. There we go. Love it. Let's talk about some uh, Alice Street. And by the way, you yeah. two are free to ask each other questions too, if you have some questions. Yeah. Uh, one of the reasons we selected this film, Spencer, is because it resonates with our city as well. Um, we are mm -hmm. in the, the, the gentrifying space of a city that is up and coming. Artists are leaving and we're struggling to stay here. Uh, the city is trying its darndest to try to keep artists here by offering a percentage for new developments to go back into the art community. I've been a recipient of those grants and so I'm grateful for the community, but at the same time, we're wrestling and you you brought this to light in Alice Street. So let's take a watch of the whole trailer and then we'll get to chatting about your feature documentary. Oakland, an intersection of traditions, ground zero for gentrification. Oakland is getting all of this national and international attention as a go-to place. What makes Oakland beautiful is the diversity and its arts. We started collaborating with community groups and neighborhoods throughout Oakland, focused on painting pieces that were valued by the community. 14th and Alice Street gets the largest mural we've ever painted. Right across the street is the Malanga Cask Lord Center for the Arts. This center has put Oakland on the international map. It's no center like this in the world. This community in Chinatown dates back over 150 years. The theme of Chinatown is surviving and thriving. Immigrant communities come together and create these enclaves because it's about our survival. The development proposal before you is at the site of 14th and Alice Street. We expect to redevelop this property. The mural would be destroyed. The way in which neighborhoods change is deliberate. Right now, there is the interest to actually transform this city. Where is this plan coming from? And then how come they didn't tell any of us? No, we need to talk about how you're going to be a part of our community. We need to protect that legacy. We need to support open artists, and we want equitable development now. It was really the mural that actually brought this coalition together. Oakland community members now are protesting fast tracking of new developments in their neighborhood. What started with the mural actually led to a movement. We did not march to City Hall, we danced. <laughs> we're here to fight, we're here to stay, we're not going away in a time when folks are being divided. Art and culture is a way that really brings us together. Oakland is here! When you try to take that away, that is just straight up gentrification. 
having places where your language and your identity and your history is affirmed is pretty critical. All of that is being threatened. Ancient rhythms, culture keepers, this is Corner 14. Okay. Alice Street. Let's hear about it, Spencer. This is a, I want to say con controversial potentially uh, story. I've, I've been, we've been getting little messages, people posting our thing. I was like, whoa, there's some tension around this story. People have some feelings about what's happening in Oakland. So uh, mm. talk about it. Any, any, any creative work we know comes with like these birthing pains. So tell us anything you want to share about it. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, um, definitely there's tension, you know, and we wanted to capture that within the film. Like I said, it really began with understanding, you know, or following the, the process of the creation of a mural, uh, which, you know, I think in any public art project, when you put something on the walls and it becomes part of the community, it's going to be, um, there's going to be different perspectives um, from folks about, you know, uh, the art on the walls, it becomes a conversation. So, um, you know, I think even watching the, the process of them, the two muralists creating the imagery and getting feedback from the community, there was tension sometimes in the room, you know, um, with in terms of determining what would be on the walls and surrounding uh, folks in their neighborhood. But yeah, in terms of the, the gentrification happening in downtown, um, as they were putting putting the paint on the walls, it was already being threatened by uh, development, as was shown in the trailer. So um, you have you know different different types of uh, you know um, I guess agendas happening in in our cities across the country right now. It's not just Oakland. It's not just an Oakland story. Um, what we've talked about is that there's Alice Streets, similar stories across you know in yeah. cities across the country right now. Um, and it's, I think part of why it's, it's landed well in, you know, in different cities, we're in process of doing this impact, uh, tour with the film, which I can talk about, um, when it's the right timing, but, um, you know, we're just keep finding that this, uh, same issue is occurring in, uh, communities across the country where in particular, you know, uh, communities of color and neighborhoods of color are, um, impacted first, uh, with, uh, you know, city plans for, for new development and people are being displaced, um, rents and, and housing uh, prices are going through the roof. Um, and this really is actually happening across the country right now, I think exacerbated by um, COVID and the kind of mass migrations that have happened um, due to COVID. So uh, yeah, we just kind of find that it's a, a story that, um, although it's really focused on a, one our local community here in Oakland, it has this national and even in some some cases international uh appeal or um mm -hmm. connection if that makes sense share a little bit about the joys and the pains and the process of bringing alice street to life well uh yeah i think it was joyful all all the way through you know um having interviews with local community leaders these artists um, based in one of the centers that's the folk, one of the focus points of the film is the Malanga Cent Cascalor Center for the Arts. And it's one of the largest um, uh, artistic homes for um, African diasporic uh, dance companies across the country. Uh, so we interviewed many of the leaders of those um, dance companies and learned their story, how they established this very important cultural center in Oakland and all of that was you know, a struggle. Um, but now you see this vibrant, amazing, beautiful center where you know, dance classes are happening, performances are happening, um, cultural, um, you know, arts are being passed down to younger generations. All of that is joy, you know, all mm -hmm. of that is beautiful. In terms of the actual making of the film, you know, it's, it's tough, like mm -hmm. was said earlier, you know, to keep at it. A feature is, is, I don't know, it's, um, for us, it was a six or seven year process to make the film. We started with a short, which I'm hearing, you know, that's a, uh, something in, in common with what Eli is doing with his, his short film. And then 
once we had that short, we were able to get it into a couple of festivals and kind of, I think, prove to grantors as well that, you know, we could, we could produce something and it, you know, wet people's appetite enough to, to support us to do a feature. But it was grant writing, you know, asking for favors uh, from, from artistic friends of ours um, all along, you know, and through to mm-hmm. the post-production process. And, and even now, as we try and get the film out. I love you that you seven, with it, Oakland. Uh-huh. Yeah, sticking with it. Did you say seven yeah. years? Yeah. We started right. filming in 2013, and we wrapped yeah. production at the end of 2019. And, Bravo. Um, so, yeah, but it took kind of that long for the story to unfold. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As you'll see in those who can you know, see the film, it's actually like you know, from the, you know, the very beginning of this idea of a mural through to the process where it's threatened by this condominium community rallies together to fight mm-hmm. back. It's almost like we needed that long, but <laughs> we weren't planning for it to take that long. All of you watching and listening uh, really should know that, you know, for the Brave Maker Film Fest, we have a bunch of free events and this is one of them. We have a really cool partnership with the city. So thank you. Speaking of grants to the Redwood City Arts Commission that grants the Brave Maker Film Fest to do this, they provide this huge LED screen in the middle of our square. I'll show you a photo of it. Uh, so bring your blankets and chairs. It fits about two or 300 people. They shut down the street for us. And the screen is like a $100,000 LED. It's really great. The sound is mwah, chef's kiss. So good. <laughs> so it's going to be a beautiful night out in the middle of our square watching a film about the arts and cities and the struggles and loves and triumphs of making, making it so. So come check that out. July 7th. Uh, the tickets are free uh, and they're on our website at bravemaker.com and Spencer will be there, which we were trying to see if we can get some of the dancers there. We don't know yet, but if you are someone from Oakland who uh, is a drummer and wants to come out, we would love to talk with you about that because we want this to be a really, really cool uh, celebration. So I, I wanted to just to circle back on that idea of persistence, both of you, you know, obviously mm-hmm. making a film is a miracle. <laughs> uh, anytime you finish something, get something done, get something out into the world, it's like the blood, the sweat, the tears, the heartache, the, um, you know, the battle wounds that we carry, like so many things, you know, I'm doing, you know, my feature film and I'm still encountering things that are going wrong. And uh, last night I was telling the team, I honestly, like, I'm so passionate. I want to keep going, but I, I would lie to you if I haven't thought on a regular basis. Like, why am I? This is why am I putting myself through this torture? It's so <laughs> hard at times. It's so re- full of rejection and debilitating and defeating and deflating and all those <laughs> negative words. I'm like and expensive. It's expensive. <laughs> uh, but yesterday I joked like Beyonce came out with her new song "Break My Soul" and I put that on repeat in the car and I was yelling, <laughs> "Release your dreams, release your stress, release your job." And I was like, "Okay." I'm going to get through this. I'm going to, I'm going to make this happen. So I don't know what you all think. I'd love your responses, but just the idea of persistence, keeping going one Mm -hmm. step at a time. How have you found you navigate through that? How have you found you cope? What are some of the things that you do? And maybe also I'd love to hear how you are surviving and or thriving, literally paying your bills because people Mm -hmm. think, Oh, I'm going to get into this. And all of a sudden I'm, you know, I'm living large. I, I got all my money, but no, we have different jobs to sustain ourselves. I'd love you all to, riff on that however you want Eli we'll start with you yeah yeah I mean I everything you're saying just like oh my god yes all of it 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 sucks like everyone that Mm -hmm. doesn't work in the business or does doesn't do film stuff it's like oh uh how's it going oh it's awful it's terrible it's like (laughs) it's it's, it sucks every process every step of the process like you have those moments of magic and all that yeah it's just like it's it's like yeah it's fun but it sucks you live for those but that's the thing is like I have to do this like you, yeah. we're all insane, Spencer. Yeah. You're you're crazy. You know we're all we're all insane people for wanting to do this, but we love it so much. We we, we have to do. We it. have to. It's like I I feel like I'm not breathing. I'm not eating. I'm not like. So it's like, and I and I tell people I, I will speak to like kids or things, and I'm like I'm like, dude, you you have to love this stuff. And uh, one of my teachers was like, oh my god, well look at the man, the social media <laughs> oh, on it. Uh, you have to be obsessed and 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 then it's like that helps you get through all the all the frustrations and all the the highs and the lows and like all of it and we had to make this movie so fast we had 
literally i just had a one page of an idea at the end of december and a final cut in the beginning of the beginning of may so we just had to make it move for a script and shooting and all that we dealt with so many highs and lows and chaos and all that but um that sense and feeling of um achievement is so beautiful and so great yeah. to have and and to have a theater and let people just laugh or be like oh, and like to dig to have that escape is just is why we do it you know the world's so dark and hard and to give them that escape and that fulfillment or that hope is is something really beautiful and and that that what's what keeps you going you have to do it you know you're uh yeah. we're all masochists but yeah it's like a, <laughs> yeah. uh but yeah it's a it's a beautiful it's a beautiful struggle Thanks Real quick, words. are you a first or second generation filmmaker oh oh first i immediately go to like latino stuff uh so mm -hmm. for, like i'm the first person in my family to do this or what do you mean yeah are you the first person in your family do you have actors or filmmakers oh, or uncle no or cousin not or at all my family you, still okay. doesn't know what i'm doing no not at all they <laughs> uh my mom wanted me to be a priest she's still disappointed okay. she thought i was going to be a priest one day um no not at all i'm the first one to do this i think i my mom hates me because not all the other kids want all my other siblings wonderful want to art stuff now <laughs> so that's great uh and then that's oh i'm good. sorry you asked outside of work outside of filmmaking yes you got to pay the bills and all that so i was lucky enough to work at buzzfeed uh for like six years mm. and i worked on side hustles uh while working there so uh, all my work is online, uh, so I do uh, social media campaigns for clients, and I uh, do speaking gigs, and I have like a coaching program to help people launch their own creative projects using social media and marketing. Um, so that helps me keep the lights on while making all these movies and stuff. So, but yeah, the internet's really exciting place. Uh, it's we use it as a tool. I'm not the biggest fan of social media, even though it looks like I do with all my thirst picks that you guys show. But I'm like, I use it with intention and it could be a really powerful tool if you use it correctly. So everyone uh, as a creative, do not be afraid to get up in these digital streets because it, it, it can help you in the long run. Go follow It's Eli Vasquez and be encouraged and chime in along and Get some inspiration to keep going because we we all need it. That's good, man. Thank you. I appreciate what you just shared. Thank you, Spencer, yeah. what about you? Yeah, well, um, it's so interesting hearing Eli's story about making a film in six months, you know, and contrasting that with our uh, film that took six, six years. And, oh, like, God, um, you're right. <laughs> you know, there's a, a lot of ways to do it. Um, and in my case, you know, I started off really uh, working with nonprofits, like I said before, uh, it was like full time career. And then working with clients on the side to do short videos, a uh, lot working actually with nonprofit clients to develop videos that could kind of help present their message in a, and get a larger audience. And, you know, continue to do that type of work until starting to bite off these, these short form documentaries and then long form. And now that's what I'm doing full time is, is working on full, uh, full length feature uh, films. Mm. I still have, you know, some clients that I work with um, for side gigs, but we're doing grant writing all of the time to keep the kind of projects moving. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, grant, I was just writing a grant today, you know, on a grant meeting today, we have a, a deadline tomorrow. Uh, and that's, you know, basically um, providing also my, my, you know, means of living. And I have, you know, a three-year-old son and, um, you know, got to get him in preschool and keep, keep all the bills paid. So mm -hmm. it's, it's all primarily grant funded. And then, like mm -hmm. I said, a few clients on the side that I've, that I've kept going, um, some editing projects and things like that. But yeah, you know, when it's really difficult, I think like Eli said, it's like that sense of, you know, you just have to, you have to make it. And in particular with this story, I felt this real tremendous responsibility mm -hmm. as well. Because once you ask someone to share their story with you, you know, they're at that point, they're like, so what's going to happen with this? You know, I just gave yeah. you my energy. What are you going to do with it? Mm. You know, what are you gonna my do story, with it? you know, my story hasn't gotten out. Like, what are you, you going to do with it now? So you feel this sense of, of tremendous responsibility, um, mm. at least I did in this case, to get the film out, you know, and we continue to, to find different routes for it. We did the whole festival tour. We were about, you know, 40 film festivals across 
uh, the country and international. Um, but now we've really gotten into this impact space and I'm loving it. You know, it's direct communication with nonprofit organizations, reaching mm -hmm. out to cities across the country to set up screenings and panel uh, discussions based on what's happening in their community. And that just feels like a kind of a sweet spot to be yeah. in right now in terms of impact. Uh, but all of that, that's works. also great, you know, grants fuel yeah. you know, to keep it, to keep everything moving. I love that oh, you're Chris. bringing this story to life. Yeah. Because this is happening I, all across the country. Mm -hmm. And for Christina and I, this is you're speaking are like the heart we have for media and the ability to impact like stories can change hearts and change minds and change mm -hmm. policies and change cities. And, you know, you can do as much as you want, which side note on grants, I had, I've been working with this grant organization. They've just been really hard, like so much writing and so exhausting and so many pushbacks. They kept, they had me rewrite the thing three different times, not because it was like bad, but because they were like, I th we think you fit better over here. I'm like, we really got to rewrite another thing. And I finally said, y'all are asking me to put into words, into narrative pages, a visual medium and an experiential event called the Brave Maker Film Fest. Can you just come to the film festival? I'll give you free tickets. Come meet the people. Come watch the films. And then maybe you'll fund next year. And the lady said, never thought about that. Yeah, we'll come. I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> it just, it's so much Outside work. the box. Yeah. Yeah. But we believe that these stories, your stories can impact people. And, and then all the conversations you're going to inspire. It's just, it's so exciting. And they will. final thing I'll it's say so is to all of our filmmakers out there, find ways to create extra resources. So you make a film and then you, you create like a, a workbook or you do speaking mm -hmm. engagements like Eli here. You're talking about uh, you're, you're using your film to launch you off into other things, merchandise, whatever it is, so that mm -hmm. you have multiple streams that can all connect. And, and for us, you know, our next film is all about Christina's journey as a paraplegic. And we're going to be sharing and creating resources to talk about disability awareness. And we I mm -hmm. get really excited about the potential even like the other thing i'll i'll sh shut up but uh, our first film we found grief specialists to help us with yeah. the story that then have now come on as partners and they speak at our film panel discussions and they created resources and they offer support groups for people who get mm -hmm. touched in a way after watching the film like this is like amazing nobody's really making money off of it but it's really having an right. impact <laughs> at this point it's having an impact so. and it's healing and tony i will tell you i had a very close family member reach out to me who i didn't know their very close best friend actually um, lost their life to suicide. And so they were very interested in our grief workbooks and how do they see your film and will it be online yeah. again? And Last Chance Charlene will be online again for those who didn't get to see it and for those who won't be able to join us in um, July for the film festival. So yeah, no, not everything creates, generates a ton of money, but what Alice Street is doing, what Bodies Will Roll and Tumble is doing is they're changing hearts and changing minds. That's probably the most powerful thing is that we don't feel like we just have to be swept up by our obstacles, swept up by gentrification. We can resist. We can push against it. Regardless if it takes one year or seven years, we can do it if we work together and continue to tell these stories. So thank you both uh, for sharing your stories. They're really incredible. Alice Street, I love Oakland. My comic book is based in Oakland. The Black Joy TV I just launched was inspired by the Black Joy Parade in Oakland. If you've never attended, it's awesome. wonderful, a very joyous event. So, yes, thank you both. Christina with the last word or second, third to last <laughs> word. I love it. Thank you. Hey, you two, we could talk to you forever, and I'm excited to talk forever. to you in, in a couple <laughs> weeks. Uh, so please go and follow uh, these two and their work. You're going to hear more about them in July, and I hope you get to meet them in the film festival. Brave Faves. TV shows, films, books, songs, technology, clothing, podcast food, and more. These are a few of our favorite people, places, and things. Brave Faves. So I've got a couple Brave Faves. I'm going to make it quick. Uh, I normally don't do uh, these type of documentaries for my Brave Fave, but my Brave Fave is The True Cost of Fashion. I'm a huge fan of when you know better, you do better. I'm definitely guilty of running off to these stores like Zara and buying these cheap clothes and using them and buying more. And it is wreaking havoc on our environment and communities in ways you cannot even imagine. I definitely encourage you to watch this documentary if you're someone who likes to shop at these kind of stores. And I think a lot of us do and we don't even think about the repercussions. 
de definitely check this out. It'll change your heart and mind. I hope for the better. Like I said, when you know better, you do better and you feel better. So that's where I'm at. I'm going to be living in these costumes now, by the way. I'm not going to buy any more <laughs> clothes. I'm going to wear these threads till they fall apart. So there's that part. And my other brave fave, oh my gosh, you guys, let's talk about music. Okay, and White Jesus, Black Problems will be screened at our film festival. I believe it's part of the Neo Soul Collection, Sunday night, July 10th. You got to come check out this film. In the meantime, check out Fantastic Negrito's music. Get the vinyl, get, the, I mean, whatever you have, check out the music. The music is so phenomenal. Uh, those are my brave faves. And I'll throw it over to you, Tony. Uh, thank you, you all. I'm just going to fave vacations. I took a vacation last week. Both Christine and I were in different parts of the world. I was in Hawaii. And it sounds like more frou-frou than it was. Uh, a friend of ours has an Airbnb. Find ways to rest and shut down and, and do cheap. Like a, a friend of ours has an Airbnb and they gave it to us at like, basically we had to pay for our flights to get over there. And that was it. Take time. Uh, as a writer, as a creator, as a hustler, I have a really hard time um, stopping because I always feel like if I stop, what's going to happen? Right? If I stop, I have to... I might miss out on an opportunity, the whole FOMO thing. So my favorite is vacationing this week. I went to Hawaii and it was beautiful. Eli, what you got? Well, well I was going to say, first off, uh, God, I, I feel bad because I dress like terrible enough. And my one saving grace is H&M and Zara. So now I'm going to look even lamer than I do now because yeah, I'm going to watch this. I'm going to feel really bad. Eli, you got the hair. That's all you need. You can I got that. All I it's all good. You can't win, man. I got a thrift now. Jeez, it takes hours. But thrift I will stores, do it. Um, oh, man. I'm so thrift guilty. Thrift stores is the way to go. Sorry, I had to I pull know. up my Hawaii picture. I and uh, right. oh wow! What, I was gonna say, what island did you go to? Tell I went to quick. Kona. It was awesome. My first time being best. in the big island. It was so so great. I ate way too many uh, shave ices. It was phenomenal. <laughs> Dude, yeah, a big island is, is is my fave. It's a really good time. Uh, but yeah, that and then uh, what? White Jesus, Black Problems. That sounds dope. I'll, I'll listen to it, watch it. I don't know what it is, but that title alone, you love I'm, it. I'm in. I'm in. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I, I okay, so I, I I am currently obsessed with this show, and I think it aligns with everything that we talked about as filmmakers. Uh, is the offer on Paramount Plus of how yeah, they made yeah, yeah. Godfather? I don't know if y'all watched it. I was like, why would I get Paramount Plus? Literally, the offer is saving Paramount Plus for me because the show's great, just for the fact of it's so painfully relatable, and there's so many beautiful, powerful monologues of just making a movie through the pain, sweat, and tears. Like Robert Evans, like that actor's phenomenal. Uh, Al Ruddy, all that. Even if not all of it's like true, and a lot of it isn't because it's kind of crazy. It's just, oh my god! If you drink a cup of coffee and watch this show, and you go through all the chaos of them just trying to get Pacino in the movie, and nobody wanted him because he, everyone thought he sucked, or Puzo being like like nah no one liked puzo no no one liked coppola no one believed in any of these amazing change makers at the time and but they fought tooth and nail to get this film made and everyone got to realize their greatness so i want everyone listening you are just one film away and you got to go through everything to prove your greatness but it will be seen if you don't stop and this is like a great film just to show that so that's my fit brave fave this week preach it, nice <laughs> yes spencer what you got Oh, well, I just, I would definitely wanted to echo the uh, White Jesus Black Problems project by Fantastic Negrito. He's out of Oakland. I can't wait to see the kind of like film hybrid album. He, I'm a big fan. So that's really cool that you uh, brought him up, uh, Christina. And actually, I'm going to be going on vacation. And then my, my return home is the day of or day before. Uh, our live uh, film in, in Red You better City. come rest it up, buddy. You better come Can't ready wait. to go bring that spirit wherever right? you go, bring that vacation spirit. Yeah, I'll be, hopefully, yeah, we'll rest it up, taking care of a toddler um, on vacation. Um, but yeah, in terms of uh, what I wanted to bring up, um, there's a, a really cool short video. I'm sorry, I didn't provide the link here, but just came out this week with W. Kamau Bell and something called Offsides Productions, which is about it's just a short video, but it's about dads for access. Um, 
and it has to do with I'm sorry, I'm like looking at it uh, here on, on my phone as we're talking here, but it's basically um, about how men right now need to join the fight to support women and um, and women's access to safe, um, healthy abortion uh, rights. And it's just a really well done kind of comedic piece on a very non-comedic um, topic. But um, check it out, it's, uh, it's really good. Um, yeah, that's maybe the, the news article about our news piece about it, but the actual piece is just, it's so well done. It's like getting anyone, I think when you get a chance, you know, when you can create laughter around a topic like this and um, really look at ways to advocate and get people to, to, to create action, I get inspired by that kind of stuff. So take, take a peek. Oh, gosh. So good, y'all. Thank you for being with us today. Stay with us as we close out uh, these in more brave maker film festival bravemaker.com we are a nonprofit, so those of you who are in the generous spirit please give and donate you can become a monthly donor at bravemaker.com slash donate or just use your phone text the word brave maker to 44321 if you are a filmmaker that you need help raising your funds you need mentorship we have a fiscal sponsorship program currently we have six different filmmakers that are in our program that we are mentoring and encouraging and trying to help get across that finish line uh, drying tears, as they say, all that stuff. Go to our <laughs> website, bravemaker.com. If you're a corporate sponsor like MDT Talent Agency or the Chan Zuckerberg Initiative or Republic Metropolitan or Popcorn that have come on to be our sponsors for the Film Fest, we need you. We need you to help uh, give to the rental of venues and for our all of our swag and lanyards and all the food and the VIP receptions. We like to feed our filmmakers. Uh, someday uh, we're going to have like a big Airbnb, Airbnb or we're going to have like uh, flights. We're going to be able to fly everybody in. We can't do that yet, but someday yes. we will with your sponsorship. So come along for the ride and make sure you go to bravemaker.com because this is where you can get your tickets. And I'm telling you right now, there's going to be some sellouts. So bravemaker.com is where all of the ticket links are. I'm going to show that if you're watching, you can check it out right now. Uh, and there's more added by the day. We even have a special potential thing that's going to pop off um as an early release uh, i have some connections in la and they approached me saying do you have a spot for us oh, to premiere yeah. this film that's coming out a week after your film fest and i said who's it starring yes who are the filmmakers yes yeah so there's a bunch of cool things and cool people oh my gosh i could talk forever about this too but we have <laughs> filmmaker producer actor jesse garcia who plays the inventor of the flaming hot cheetos in ava longoria's film he's gonna be with us all four days as an ambassador we have showrunner jeffrey lieber who created lost was on charmed we have angela harvey who did a hundred some episodes of teen wolf on mtv and many more so come bravemaker.com get your tickets these filmmakers get to come for free and you know pass their vip pass and go into all the things you can too check it out at bravemaker.com what do we got coming up next week christina we have some more exciting filmmakers who will be joining us next week for our show. We'll be live at four. And we couldn't do the show without our amazing team. I want to thank Amy Cohen, our live show producer out of Austin, Texas. Carrie Alley, our social media manager out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Barnell Amos, our podcast editor out of Grand Rapids as well. Our Bay Area intern, Emerson Morley. And our newest intern, who I got to meet last night, Sarah Agolia, who has joined us from Missouri. We're so happy to have you here, and we are so excited for the film festival. Definitely come join us. Follow these guys. It's Eli Vasquez on Instagram and mm -hmm. Alice Street Film on Instagram. Did I get that right, Spencer? I think I did. Yes, Alice Street Film. Yes. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, we will see you too in two and a half weeks. Uh, stay afterwards. Love to get a picture yeah. with you guys. Anything else you want to say before we jam out? Anything else? Any last words? You have the platform. Uh, Anything? Freaking go for it. If you're listening, watching all that, especially if you're creative co of, of color, obviously mm -hmm. Spencer was able to make a whole feature of surrounding artists of color. I'm an artist of color that took advantage of uh, Netflix throwing money at me. Now's the time. You, Take advantage, everybody. They're, the dollars are out there. Be aggressive. Don't stop. That's Be aggressive. All right. I love it. I hope you find yeah. some money. Thank you for this opportunity to lift yeah. up these projects and this platform, you know, um, for, for selecting our films and for doing all the hard work behind the festival to get us all there. You know, we, we appreciate it. it and it's huge. It's what makes Definitely. this possible. Thank you.
we know what it feels like, right? Christine and I are makers yeah. ourselves. So we know what it feels like to need that affirmation. So we'll do our best. <laughs> All right. Hey, thanks everybody. You are amazing. Thanks for these filmmakers being with us. We always end the show by saying Thank brave you. stories change the world. And you are the story. Bye everybody. Don't go away, you two. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook at BraveMaker.org. Like, subscribe, and share. To become a monthly donor, text the word BraveMaker to 44321 or go to BraveMaker.com slash donate. Thanks for tuning in.